Hey everybody, it's a special edition of DDO Players News as we are privileged to have our first author on the show. We are really going highbrow now. We have an author. We have made it. <laughs> We're talking to Jonathan French. He is the author of uh, the upcoming book, The Gray Bastards, which we will talk about. Uh, his debut novel, The Exalt Heir, was nominated for a Best First Novel at the Georgia Author of the Year Awards back in 2012. So he's been writing for quite a while. So welcome, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, no problem. Thanks for agreeing to come on. I know uh, we had a little scheduling snafu, and you graciously uh, worked around that, so I appreciate that very much. Oh, no. No issues. <laughs> Before we uh, get started, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. I kind of, you know, read a little bit of your bio, but uh, you can share anything else you would like. That would be awesome. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Um, like, well, you kind of, I mean, like you covered it. I'm, I, I'm an author. I write fantasy books. I started off as a self-published author um, with my first two books and then the first edition of The Grey Bastards, which we'll talk about. But uh, um, I entered, after a couple years, I entered this uh, cool contest called the Self-Published Fantasy Blog Off, and I entered my book, The Grey Bastards, into that. And uh, it caught the eye of, of uh, Penguin Random House, and so now I'm in this process of transitioning between being a self-published author and now going into what they call the traditional publishing world and working with, you know, a big big name publisher and and all that so um yeah i mean it's 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 kind of a weird learning curve and a, it's it's a flux time but it's really exciting i'm, I'm glad to finally be here it was something i kind of w wished for and i don't know if i really realized it was going to happen until it did but um now that we're here, I'm, I'm excited to, to see where it goes. And yeah, I was going to bring that up. We will definitely talk about that, kind of how, how different it is going from the self-publishing world to the traditional route. Uh, I was going to bring that up, so I'm glad you kind of mentioned that. We will get to that in a bit. But first of all, I want to ask you, I kind of, uh, I'll admit that I stalked you on your Twitter. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> and I see you're a big gamer, so you want to talk about uh, your gaming history because it looks like uh, you're a pretty good, big gamer, which is pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, I mean, I I think I started playing role playing games in '86, maybe '87. My I, I my older brother started playing um, basic edition D and D, you know, the red box, and um, with some of his friends, and and they. <laughs> They needed uh, they needed a cleric and and so they just roped in my you know me. It's like oh let's get my kid brother and he, you know he'll do what we tell him. And, and they made you play the cleric. <laughs> well yeah, so like <laughs> I I uh, I didn't really like I was kind of young. I was only like six or seven and I I didn't really totally understand like you know I was a big Masters of the Universe you know He Man fan. So I was into fantasy, but I you know I didn't get that I kind of had could create my character. So they showed me the, I think it was probably Larry Elmore artwork inside that book. And I thought that, that like, Oh, I was this guy. Like I was the guy with the page boy haircut, you know, and like, okay, I'm, so I'm him. And, and I didn't realize that. No, I totally have, you know, the ability to, to do my own thing, but I had a lot of fun with it. And, um, eventually I figured the game out more and was like, Oh, I'd rather be a dwarf. And so I, you know, I switched and, and just stuck it out. And I, um, Right, right about that time, a couple of years after that, I, I moved, my whole family moved to, to the UK, to, to, to England, and it was just uh, such a, a bigger gaming experience. Like, it was just more popular there, and there were more stores that carried product, and plus there was all the castles and cathedrals all everywhere. So it just, it just became this just, like, lifelong thing. And, I, and then I segued into uh, wargaming with uh, War, Warhammer and Warhammer 40,000, and and uh, it just kind of took off. So then I'm painting miniatures, and you know I, I start playing other role playing games besides D and D. Uh, and and yeah, I just here I am. You know, 30 years later, still still at it, like a lot of us uh, veteran beardy vets. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I mean, I, I don't think my story is really all that unique. But I mean, I um, now I still I still I still love it. I still keep up with it. And yeah, it's I mean I, I've I've tried a, a good fair amount of, of just about everything. And and uh, yeah, it's it's my principal hobby, so I just can't believe they made you play the cleric. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's, they needed it, so there there you go. I guess I I guess I did my part, but 
And then uh, we'll transition into uh, you being an author then. I know you kind of hinted about it a little before that you started uh, in the self-publishing world. So you want to talk mm-hmm. about your first couple books? Yeah, well, so I uh, I never really planned to be a writer. I mean, I always, you know, like I was a gamer, so I was writing stuff to run for games. And I, I enjoyed creative writing assignments in school. But, I, you know, I, I never really saw it as, as a career so much. But I always did well with it. And I, you know, took some playwriting courses in college that I enjoyed. And, uh, and I actually moved to Chicago in 2007. Uh, and I was, I was going to be uh, an actor and a stuntman. I'd gotten this role. And so I moved from Atlanta to Chicago in February. And it was you know, freaking freezing and I didn't know anybody. And so I didn't, <laughs> yeah. you know, I didn't, I didn't really have any money. And, and, uh, you know, I was, I was loading trucks at, for UPS at night and just, oh, geez. You know, yeah. So my shift was, my shift was four to nine. And, um, and, uh, so I had this five hour, like 4am to 9am shift in February. And it was just, it was, and I, I the only thing I had a laptop that could just barely run world of Warcraft. And so I was kind of spending a lot of time in that. And then one day I just sort of, I just sort of had it and I needed something else to do. And I just, this therapeutic, I started this story and it just kind of bit me. And, and 18 months later I had a completed, uh, you know, 165,000 word manuscript, which was my first fantasy book called the exiled air. And, uh, I, I, it just took over my life. I just say, this is what I want to do. I, I, I had an agent. I got an acting agent. I had, I had an agent for acting. I got rid of her. I, I completely told her, I said, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to go to any more auditions. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I want to write. And, um, and so I just, I just stuck with it and it took me, I, I, you know, I attempted to do some, some, the traditional route, you know, query some agents and send letters and see if I could get some interest. And, you know, I really, I just wasn't any good at it. I, I just couldn't make that process work for myself. And, um, my friends who were also my gaming buddies, um, they were all, I'd, I'd made some friends in Chicago at this point after a couple of years. And, um, they were, they were all about 10 years older than me. So they were, they were really heavy into like the punk rock world and they you know that that whole scene is all about independent spirit and you know entrepreneurship and doing it yourself and and my my friend rob who the book is dedicated to said man you you really ought to look into self-publishing i think that's really the way to go and so i just started doing research and it took me a little bit like i finished the book in 2009 but i didn't self-publish until 2012 so it took me quite a bit of time and I, you know i did get married within that point so life kind of got in the way I, I really enjoyed like the whole thing of being, you know, having control of it and being able to, you know, pick your own cover artist and, and, you know, you know, it was, it was like a small business. It all sort of fell onto me. Right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. So yeah, I just, I, I don't regret it. I, I really enjoyed doing it and um, it's opened up a lot of doors after, you know, it took about 10 years, but you know, it's, it's really changed. So. And I know the, um, your new book, which is the gray bastards, which is coming out uh, in June from Penguin Random House. You actually self-published that to begin with. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. In October of 2015, I put it out. You know, I, I kind of abandoned, Not, well, I hate to say that because I had written two books in, in my series and uh, my sequel to the Exiled Air uh, called The Errantry of Bantam Flynn was, uh, you know, it's, it's still the book that I'm honestly most proud of, but it was such a big, hefty like sequel. And I just... I kind of took a break and was doing a palate cleanser and I, I, I had conceptualized this game to, to run for D and D fifth edition. And, uh, I, I was like, I'm going to run a game and I'm going to, you know, it's going to be like this, this it's going to be like sons of anarchy with these, these, uh, you know, this gang of, of, of half orcs. And, and, um, I just, it's all my, I'm just going to tell all my players, like, you know, the only stipulation is you have to be a half orc. We're all going to be the same race and you're all going to be a part of this sort of like fantasy motorcycle gang. And, my wife said, well, why are you going to run a game? You should just write a, write the book. And I said, well, I don't want to. She said, well, just try it and see what happens. And so I wrote you know, I wrote the first chapter just to see, like, what would happen. And we really, my wife and I, who I trust her, she's kind of my partner in crime. And, and she said, I really think you have something here. And I said, all right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. So I, I, I wrote it and then self-published it. And with all intentions of it just sort of being its own thing and, and then just getting back to my series, it it just started to kind of take off and it became Frankenstein's monster. And, and it, it, it did what I, in my wildest dreams thought it could. 
in, as far as, you know, I started to get all this interest from publishers and, and all that. But um, yeah, so I did, I did, I self-published it. And so now here we are almost three years later and it's about to be released in hardback in, in multiple countries and all this crazy stuff. So <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of mind boggling. I don't know. It's surreal. You know, and it's funny that you say that about running it in fifth edition as, cause I was reading it. I got a uh, uncorrected galley proof of it. Uh, right. and, and as I was reading it, I'm thinking this would make an awesome D and D campaign. <laughs> so, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's what it was. Yeah, it was, it was what it was intended to and be. And so. now that makes sense. And you know, I mean, I didn't know that at the time, but it's just funny that that's what I thought. And now that you say that's actually what it it was intended for, that is mm -hmm. uh, pretty amazing, actually. So yeah, so let's uh, get into the gray bastards. Uh, you want to give us uh, the elevator pitch of the book? Yeah, so I mean, it's Sons of Anarchy with half orcs. I mean, that's that's basically the pitch. It's it's um you know it's a fantasy biker gang so it's 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 taking all those sort of tolkien classic races and and just kind of getting them laid um it's a little <laughs> bit it's, it's not you know it's i love tolkien i love middle earth but it's a chaste it's a pretty chaste world and and so i just sort of wanted to to do what a lot of you know modern fantasy authors do and 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 a little grim twist to it and a little dirty and and so it's it, it follows the, the the title the gray bastards it follows um this gang called the gray bastards and most specifically jackal who's kind of a young ambitious uh, half orc writer in in the in the gang and he's has his eye set on leading the gang but his his chief the guy who's currently running the gang is also the founder of the gray bastards and he's this old just tyrannical almost you know unkillable old warrior who uh is really dangerous to challenge and there's not only that inner turmoil, but the world, the Badlands that they live in, is is just fraught with all sorts of, of of danger. So there's you know threats from within and threats from without. So Jackal has to pick his timing, and of course nothing goes to plan, and, and chaos ensues. And so yeah, that's that's kind of the rundown. When you say Sons of Anarchy, is that's exactly it? But can I just say that instead of motorcycles, they're riding hogs. You're right. It's like, actually, awesome. <laughs> like actual hogs. It's awesome. Like, because when I first read that, I was like, holy crap, that is awesome. <laughs> well, and it's funny because, like, you know, I wasn't originally going to do it. And my wife was like, no, no, no. You I said, don't, you don't think that's a little too on the nose? Like, you know, because hogs are a term, you know, right. Motorcycle. Exactly. And, that's... Uh, and just, I was like, don't you think that's a little too on the nose? And, and uh, she said, no, you should totally do it. So, and it, and it, it, it completely made it. It, it complete because as you, if you've read it, you know. I mean, it's the whole thing is basically stemmed from that. I mean, all the culture, everything. Right. About, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so it really worked well. Um, so yeah, I should, it's funny. I should I should have said, but uh, thank you for ma yeah. for making my pitch better because I completely <laughs> dropped the ball. Yeah. They. Do, yeah. That's why. Yeah. It's yeah. just it was just and it was like surprising to me because. I'm like, okay, because, you know, I saw on the back cover, it was like, you know, Sons of Anarchy meet, you know, Half Orcs. And it's like, okay, you know, th this is going to be cool. And I'm like, how how are they going to do this in this fantasy setting? And then I was like, okay, that's genius. <laughs> well, I think, I, yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, it, you know, it's it has this sort of Western theme to it. And I grew up on spaghetti Westerns. And so, you know, when I, when I knew I wanted to be kind of ma this mounted gang, you know, I, it just lent itself to this whole thing. And. And it was, and then so the world building from there, even is just you know, everything depends on you being able to move quickly from one place to the other and efficiently in in, in numbers, but sort of being these skirmishers and these, and and it's not just the the main characters, the gray bastards. It's sort of the whole culture of, of everywhere in that in the country that it takes place in, and so it, it does have this sort of you know, posse feel, and and it, it was nice and it, it gave it gave it a lot of energy, so. Yeah, it's it's it, it was a lot of fun. So I'm glad to hear that it's fun for the readers as well. Oh yeah, it was a at, lot of fun to write. At least for me, I can say it was, and it was. You know, I I can honestly say usually when I read books, I can figure out you know about maybe quarter of the way in something like that. I can figure out okay, I know where this is going to go. I'm um, I'm seeing how this is being set up, and this like totally threw me. I was like, wow, I did not s okay. Okay, so yeah, so it's it's a great read, and as we said, it is coming out uh, in June from Penguin Random House, and you kind of touched on it a little earlier, but let's talk about that. How is it going from the self-published world 
to the big leagues, as we'll <laughs> say. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's humbling. It's hard. I mean, it, it's I kind of it's it's difficult to talk about without sounding conceited. But the the best way I know how to describe it without being too terribly boring, or if I can if I can avoid it, it's it's the difference between being Strider and being Aragorn. Like it in that when you know when you're Strider, you're kind of on your own. You're 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 fighting the good fight. You've got a couple allies that you check in with every now and then, but for the most part, you know, you're just doing your own thing. And then, and then, <laughs> and then these these really powerful individuals show up and they say, "Hey, we're waging the same war, but we need you to sort of stand up and and, and wage it with us, and, and we're going to back you." But the but the threat is larger, and we're going to go to war, and the enemy's bigger, and you can't lurk in the shadows anymore, and we need you to kind of like you know own it. And so it it you know. It's hard because when I always thought it could happen, but I, I, you know, I wondered, I said, you know, is, is it going to be right for me? When I got the initial email from Penguin Random House, you know, it was throwing because at first I thought it was a scam. I, <laughs> I, I, re- I really, because when you're a self-published writer, like you, there's a cottage industry that has grown up around self-published writers and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's, self-published writing is great and, and there's a lot of people editors you know freelance editors and, and artists and all this that have, that have developed this industry around it so you're used to getting these fee, these kind of fee, feeler emails from people and so i thought it was just another freelance editor being like hey but then i saw the i saw the the, the signature at the end like the in the email and it was you know penguin random house and i checked the address and I'm, I'm waiting for it to be misspelled you know like get you know like it's like a scam like oh they're trying to like random or house is misspelled like house with a z or something, right exactly you know? like, yeah you know? yep. and, and so um and so you know i got on the phone with this guy and this editor and while we're talking like i didn't like i googled him enough to make sure he was legit but i didn't really dig and then over the course of the conversation i find out that this dude is the same editor that did the martian and did ready player one and Holy crap right Exactly. So I basically had a stroke and a heart attack and <laughs> yeah, at I the bet. same time. And like, and you know, you're sitting there going, Oh, okay. So then you go from being, you go from being kind of like, Oh, I'm talking to an editor at Penguin Random House to sweating bullets and being like, Oh, don't screw this up. <laughs> um, and so, and you know, and, and he, you know, he's a humble dude and he wasn't saying like, Oh, I'm the cats, you know, you know, whatever, but he, he wasn't promising me anything, and, but he really opened and he said, look, do you, you even have any interest in in doing this like do you even want to leave self publishing and i said well you know i'd certainly be open to it and and so it's you know now i have all of these allies and this team behind me that have all this experience and they're very passionate about books and they're they're really professional and and you know there's a learning curve involved in that and i always kind of right now i sort of feel like i'm the weakest link in the chain you know <laughs> it's like yeah. i'm the guy who's you know i you know and not that not that I don't have pride in what I've done and not that I think that. Right. Exactly. But. Yeah, yeah. But, but there, there is, there is a, there is this, this learning curve and there is this transition period that I'm still going through. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. It's been it is stressful, but the stress comes from really positive sources and, you know, sort of be careful what you wish for, but be ready for it when it happens. And, you know, but yeah, it's a much bigger stage. I mean, it, it, you know, there there are plenty of really great, successful self-published authors who who've done way more than I ever did with it. Um, who who have great platforms and and all that. But I just realized that I was not I was the problem. Like I was holding Gray Bastards back. Like it was getting a lot of attention, and I wasn't able to really keep up with it. And so it was like, okay, now, this is what I was looking for, and this is the right time, and this is the right offer, and these are the right people, and it all just sort of came together. So I was very fortunate. Um, I still sort of wonder if I'm going to wake up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like, pinch me. I must be dreaming. This is not actually happening to me. But right, yeah. right. When, and you said, did, did they approach you or did you approach them? No, they, th- so they approached me. So what happened was I entered, in, entered into a contest, this uh, self-published, uh, self-publishing fantasy blog off, which I like to call Spiffbo for short. <laughs> And, That's awesome. um, and, uh, it's run, it was created by Mark Lawrence, who is a fantasy author who has, you know, quite a big following, but he's a traditionally published guy. He's never been self-published. You know, he did the Prince of Thorns and, and, uh, you know, a broken empire and all that. And he, you know, he just wanted to, he, I guess he just kind of got fascinated with this idea of, can, you know, can we increase exposure for self-published fantasy authors? And, and so that was the whole prize. It was nothing but like enter your book into this contest and see if it does well. And it, and the only prize is you get exposure. And so 
what the year that I entered the contest, there were 300 books, give or take, that entered. Oh wow! And yeah, and so what the it's, he he has these he got these pretty well established uh, book bloggers who volunteered their time, and basically it's like okay, there's 10 book bloggers. I'm going to give you 30 books each. You each pick one book that you out of your 30 that you think is the best, and then those books form a top 10. And then all the bloggers read the other nine and vote and, you know, give scores. And then that's how we get a winner. And kind of conceitedly, I told my wife on answered, I said, I will never make the top 10. But if I'm <laughs> but but if I make the top 10, I'm going to win. That's that was what I said. And that right. was, it was a bit it was a bit arrogant, but that was just sort of my feeling. And then I'm. I made the top 10 and then you kind of like, do, do you kind of double back on that confidence? Then you start biting your nails. Like, Oh, I got, I got this far. And, um, so that, you know, in that way, the contest generated exactly what Mark Lawrence wanted it to, which was, can we increase exposure? And it did. And so somehow this editor at Penguin Random House was, had his eye on the contest and started looking at some of these reviews that these bloggers were giving for these books and shot me an email after he'd read the book. And, um, you know, that was the most impressive thing is he didn't he didn't like shoot me an email being like, oh, I've heard about it. And yeah, exactly. Talk. You know, he had he covered a cover. He knew it. He knew the characters. He understood it and uh, really dug it. And so, yeah. So, no, they 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 approach me, which is, you know, it's it's pretty it's it's hard. It's hard because you, you try to stay humble. But at the same time, you, you, you do get jazzed and a little charged uh, at, at that. So, well, yeah, I. I could see that because, I mean, that's, you know, a big freaking deal. I mean, that talking about uh, Penguin Random House, which is, you know, not a small publishing company. Right. You know, saying, hey, I read this book. I think it's going to do big things. I think we can help you get there. So let's talk. And then you're like, this can't right. be real. Right. You know, right. Right. <laughs> and see, it's funny because there's so many imprints, too. So, like, it's, you know, while, you know, Penguin Random House is the big name. So the imprint that that Grey Bash is actually coming out under is Crown which I've, I, you know, had never even really heard of. Like, you know, it's not like movies, you know, like a lot of people, we, we kind of know the studios. We're like, oh, Sony. And, yeah, you know, exactly. And, yeah. You know, 20th Century Fox and all that. But with books, like there's so many imprints that we don't, no one, no one is like loyal to an imprint for the most part. It's not like, oh, I don't read a book if it's not from Crown, right? I mean, right, exactly. Like, yeah. It, you know, we don't have that same relationship like people do with, say, comic books or it's like Marvel or DC. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, at first, it, you know, it's, it was funny because even my friends and family were sort of like, who's that? <laughs> you know, yeah. Like who's crown? Like, what does yeah. that even mean? And you, then you have to sort of like, you, you know, almost felt like I was defending myself. I'm like, well, it's penguin random house. And then yeah. suddenly everyone's like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's, okay. It's, this is yeah. legit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny how, that, how that, how that sort of like that conversation has to happen and you feel like you're name dropping, but at the same time, like it does, there is a greater sense of scale and, and it is, you know, it is the big leagues and, and there's this, the stakes are a lot higher. Yeah, and I'm uh, glad I actually found out about it. It, it. it was kind of funny. I had contacted them about another book they have coming out. And then in the process of that, they're like, hey, we have this new book coming out. It sounds like it would fit your audience. And then they like sent it to me. I read it. I'm like, okay, this is amazing. And then they're like, well, we, we can get you an interview with the author. And I'm like, but he has no idea who this podcast is. I'm just some, no. <laughs> weird, I'm just some weird dude on the internet and he's going to talk to me. And they're like, Oh yeah, no problem. Week. So yeah, it, it was great yeah. there. Well, no, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I play DDO. I play, it, I know what it is. <laughs> so, I mean, that was helpful. I mean, again, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess, and maybe I'm wrong. Was the book that you were interested in that, that art of D and D book? That yes, got it was. Yeah. Yes. I knew. I, I mean, it's, yeah, they've got, yeah. I mean, they've got all this stuff coming in and there's, there's a lot of, you know, Penguin Random House is doing a lot of interesting stuff just within the gaming, and that that book is is one of them. And so, I yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah, um, it, you know, it was just great because they uh, PR contact, you know, just said, hey, you know, we have this new book, uh, the this new author. It sounds like it would fit your genre. Your audience would dig it, and I'm like, sure, I'll, I'll check it out. And then, yeah, lo and behold, you know, I, I loved it. And I'm not just, you know, blowing smoke because you're here no. on, on this call <laughs> with me. It. I mean, I'm actually, you know, I really honestly loved the book and then i said yeah please let's you know get on so so I, I can talk to him and then here we are so but yeah it is coming out june the 19th is when it is scheduled and uh, as you hear this interview the book should already be available and down in the notes for this episode there should be links to all the different places you can buy it and i help help support jonathan and so can i ask you the question you're probably not going to be able to answer for me but i'm going to ask you anyway 
Okay. Is there going to be a sequel? There is. I can't, awesome. I can't, I can't <laughs> answer that. Uh, yes. So <laughs> there is, there is a sequel. Um, it, it should be out in 2019. Uh, I, I won't say a month because that is based on me, you know, making my deadlines, which is <laughs> right. always tricky. No, there is definitely going to be more. Um, so, you know, we're, we're excited to, to be able to say, no, this is the start of something. And, um, we're hopeful that, that fans and readers are going to care enough to want <laughs> to want to continue. But no, we're, we're uh we're 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 excited to say there is going to be more bastards more orcs on <laughs> more orcs on hogs more more foul-mouthed you know violence <laughs> yeah. and yeah yeah and 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 that's what was great it's like there's this book covers everything there is you know foul mouth half half orcs check there's uh some you know we'll say racy humor racy mm-hmm situations check you got that you got some amazing fight scenes in here that you i think wrote very very well and you have an interesting world which i guess i didn't even bring that up but you designed the world that this is set in as well correct yeah uh you you want to talk about the world just a little bit Sure. I mean, um, so, you know, I, got, I mentioned the spaghetti Western thing before. Um, and so, you know, it, it was all sort of crazy and maybe this is only interesting to me, but you know, I was, I was looking at it and, and, and then I was like spaghetti Westerns and I want to do this kind of fantasy Western, but not, you know, with guns I wanted. And then I realized I was like, well, wait, a lot of those spaghetti Westerns were filmed in the South of Spain. And I said, well, the South of Spain had this really cool period. And I knew a little bit about it in the medieval period called the Reconquista where, you know, the medieval Spanish were trying to like retake it from the Moors. And, and there was this like melting pot thing going on where, you know, you had all these, you know, Muslims from North Africa coming in and then there was the Christians in Spain. And, and I just thought, you know, I, what if I can kind of take that and fantasy it up and, you know, just like, and, and use that as sort of my analog and my, my inspiration. And so the world really just, just took on a life of its own from there. I just started to see connections everywhere. And so what you end up what the what it ended up being is in the fantasy version is you have this badlands region called Olwendulis and colloquial known as the Lotlands and the reason it's called the Lotlands is divided up into lots um, by the human kingdom in the north called Hispartha and so um, Hispartha fought a war with the orcs and the orcs lived uh, south in Dargest and when they when they they were losing this this war because the orcs were just crushing them and but what came of that was humans were using half orcs as slaves and so the half orcs ended up going from being just like grave diggers and potters and like you know these these like drovers just these this workforce and they ended up you know fighting back and f- they fought for the humans and so they the humans realized wait a minute we have an untapped power source here and so um the half orcs were able to help drive the orcs back and so in sort of as a reward um <laughs> sort of a, a, a double-fisted reward or a, 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 award, a reward that cuts both ways, they gave they gave the half-orcs their freedom and then also gave them this Badlands region between their kingdom and the Orc kingdom and said, okay, this land is yours. We're going to divide you up into lots. Here it is. So it's a bit of a play on, like, you know, reservations like we did to the First Nations people here and um, and said, look, you know, as long as you can defend it, you it's yours. And so these this half-orc uh, culture has arisen in this, in this, in this no-man's land. And they, they formed these gangs riding these hogs in order to stay mobile and stay alive. And so it, it, it has that sort of like, you know, hot, dusty, you know, thing that you're used to in a Westerns where people are roaming all over the place. And you, you kind of never know, like, what dangers around the next, you know, bend and, and so are over the next horizon. And, and um, yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's got that all those things just sort of stewed together into a nice little hot, grimy, crude <laughs> violent pot <laughs> yep that hey that is a perfect perfect explanation for exactly what that is That's... <laughs> and um i should have asked you this earlier but i actually just thought of something uh since this book was self-published and now it is coming out from Crown publishing which is an imprint of penguin random mouse is there going to be any differences between your self-published version and the hardcover right so there there what i what I wanted to do from the start was I did not, cause I did, you know, there was, there was a, a year there where the self-published version was out and I knew I had some readers and not a ton, but there were, there were some really devoted readers of the self-published edition. And I did not want them to have to reread it 
I wanted them to be able to say, like, I read it and I know the story. And if there, you know, if there was a sequel, which there is, like, to be able to go right into the sequel without having to reread anything. I didn't want to have to, you know, force them to do that. It just seemed, it just seemed unfair. It just seemed disingenuous. So my editor really understood that and he agreed. And so what we did was he's very good. Um, you know, he's produced some amazing books and he, he had some awesome notes, but we took those notes and we just sort of tightened the plot. We, 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 uh, sharpened some motivations. We did, you know, the book is cleaner. It's better in that it's a little bit, it's more polished. It, you know, I think it comes across a little bit more professional, mm-hmm. but that, that is not to say that the self-published version is like inferior in any way. Um, or that anybody, you know, if you've read the self-published version, you can go right into the sequel without a problem. There's if for like really hardcore bastards fans who read the self-published version, there are a couple like small little new scenes that, that, that happen, um, that might be interesting and almost like DVD extras that are now incorporated into the, into the story, but it's nothing that, that would, that would throw, throw it off. So it's, it's sort of a yes and no. I mean, yes, there are differences, but they're so minor that they don't, they don't ripple effect. They don't, they don't cause any, any major changes. All right. So can you tell our audience where they can find you on the internet? Yeah. So, um, my dedicated website is Jonathan French books.com. Um, I think JonathanFrench.com is some like realtor in Washington State. So <laughs> he's like, "Why are all these people asking me these yeah, weird right, questions about right. AppWorks?" <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So I had to, I had to add books to it. Um, I'm on Twitter as Jay French Author. Um, I have a, a Facebook author page. I I'm starting to learn Instagram. Um, you know, for those who can figure out uh, who my character is on Lord of the Rings Online, you know, have fun. <laughs> um, I do still have I do still have an active character on Lord of the Rings Online. Um, you know, I mean, it's I'm 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 fairly fairly out there. Um, but I, you know, I I'm starting to learn Reddit a little bit, which I know is really popular for. Fan- I'm not quite. I'm still a noob, but um, I'm trying to lurk on there a little bit. And uh, yeah, and. and Odds are I might pop up on a gamer forum or a Facebook group about some obscure edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battle or something. So I'm a, I'm around in, in nerddom. <laughs> you can find you if you look, right? Yeah, that's right. Where's <laughs> right. Waldo? Yeah, exactly. All right, well, Jonathan, well, thanks so much for taking uh, time to talk to us. And once again, the book is The Gray Bastards, and it is coming out from Crown Publishing. It will be available on June the 19th. I really appreciate you having me on. Thank you so much.